How much did we make today? Five million. How much did we lose today? A billion. You got rich dudes pissing in their pants right now. Hi, my name's David. I'm CEO of ASMX. And what you just saw there was the beginning of the trailer for Dumb Money, which is a, a, uh, a movie that is coming out about a company called GameStop. And this, uh, this is a, a situation where a bunch of retail investors all got into a company and caused a stir in Wall Street. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit later how it works. But the reason I started off with something like that is because, uh, as promised, I'm looking to do a series of videos about what ASMX actually does. It's all very well as banging on about the tech, blockchain, tokenization, uh, you know, regulated digital securities and how quick the system is and all that sort of stuff, which is fantastic. But the audience for that is other people in our industry, uh, and perhaps investors in our business, uh, and not really at the core of why we're doing what we're doing and what we're doing what we're doing and what the system actually does. And so what I aim to do over this particular series is show you how the system works, but why we do it that way, so that you can see where the opportunity is for you, the retail investor. Well, at our core, what we do is list companies on a stock exchange and raise money for them. That's essentially what we do. All the blockchain stuff, the tokenization stuff, all that sort of stuff is the rails for us to achieve that. But why, so what is the thing that ASMX can bring to the process? Well, number one, it's much more efficient the way that we do things. We use an alternative method other than an initial public offering, an IPO. We use AI in the documentation process and the preparation process. So we can make it very quick, very efficient, and also cost effective. And because it's cost effective, that means more companies can list their equity, their debt, or indeed their security tokens, revenue tokens. And so at it's so why would someone list? What's the what's the point? Well, let me take a company that is already listed on another exchange somewhere. Those companies can do what they call a secondary listing, meaning they can have a listing on one exchange, in London perhaps, and they can list it on another exchange in America, for example. What we allow is for those companies to list on the exchange partners that we work with. And why would they do it? Well, we have a system that allows us to have an audience of direct retail corporate investors. So. Our platforms are uh, all over the world. So we've got, we're opening one in Abu Dhabi, in Malta, in Jersey, in the UK, and we have several others that, we're all, that we are uh, 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 looking at at present. So imagine each one of those has 100,000 investors on those platforms. You can see how quickly the audience is there for those listed companies. Because if you're listed in somewhere like uh, Frankfurt, for example, and I'm not having a go at the Frankfurt Exchange, um, but the, the, uh, there is limited trading on those exchanges. Um, you know, you have to download uh, 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 software. I've, I've tried it. You have to download certain software from a certain bank uh, that have been in the on downloadable software business for a very long time. And, uh, uh, and then you've got to get your shares into the system where you can uh, trade those uh, shares. It's super complex. Getting money onto the account is super complex. So the friction is there. It's all, a fr there's a lot of friction trading those kind of businesses. It's not like trading the London Stock Exchange through your Hargreaves Lansdowne account or your AJ Bell account or, or as easy as trading NASDAQ stock on eToro, for example. It's just very difficult to trade those companies. And as such, they don't have much volume, they don't have much liquidity, and, they're, uh, and th there is a problem. We aim to solve that. We can create more liquidity through our customer base and through the ease and frictionless way that we can trade. But for those of you that are uh, looking at this space and thinking, well, you know, what, what is liquidity? Rather than me prattling on, I, do, I tend to do this in videos because I, I look at other people's videos and they can say it better and more c concise than I can. So let me just play this video for you, which is a very, very good, quick explanation of how liquidity works. And I'll come back and explain how we work with that from there. What is liquidity 
and why is it important to you? Liquidity is the ability of an asset to be turned into cash. Some assets are more liquid than others. So here we have a bank account. It's highly liquid as you can see. Your money is stored in this jug so you can get to it whenever you want some. Going out to dinner in a movie, quick trip to the teller machine, you're good to go. On the other hand, this is your house. It's not liquid. It's still an asset. For a lot of people, it's their most valuable asset, but it's going to take some time to turn it into cash so you can spend it, and you can't really break off a little chunk without going to a lot of trouble. Now, between these two extremes of completely liquid and highly illiquid assets, we have a brokerage account. It's not quite liquid now, but you can turn it into cash pretty quickly, and if you need just a little cash, well, you can break that off. So, uh, as you can see, that was a very good, succinct explanation of liquidity. And if you imagine that frozen house uh, as the shares that are locked up in a business that cannot be sold because there's not enough buyers and sellers, then you can uh, visualize how you can create value if you can increase liquidity. When he talked about the brokerage account in the middle, that's very much what we aim to do. Let's say, for example, that house represented in that video was a portfolio. It was not a listed company. It was a portfolio of properties. You've invested in Dubai. You've, had, you've, met, you've got a hundred million dollars worth of properties throughout the region. Um, and, and, and you're looking for a bit of liquidity. How do you do it? Well, you could phone your broker up and say, hey, I want you to sell 10 of my houses. I've got something that I need to do in the UK or I want to buy some more houses over in New York or in London or wherever. Um, and your broker will look around for a buyer and no doubt will be able to fire a buyer in a decent marketplace. Um, and then maybe a few months later you say, hey, you know what, I've, I've, I've made an awful lot of money. Uh, I'd like you to buy me some more houses. So your broker goes off and buys some houses and tops up your portfolio. So uh, that would be a nice situation for us all to be in, but I'm just using it as an example of how we can create liquidity in that situation. You could take that portfolio of houses, you could put it into our system and securitize it and fractionalize it where you and I could buy into that portfolio for a pound. Now imagine, as I said, 100,000 investors in each individual node throughout the world that are connected to our system. And you can imagine there is a lot of liquidity of people that would be interested in the capital appreciation and the yield that is available in Dubai property. And that could be in London property, in New York property, in Antigua property. There are plenty of ways of doing it. And you'll have seen the big buzz about tokenization. But at its core, all it is, is taking that uh, illiquid asset, that frozen asset, and being able to break it up into little pieces. So whenever we need some liquidity, we can take it out. My job or our job as a, as a business is to make sure that there's enough people that will buy that little piece when you want to, uh, when, when you want to sell it. And I'll show you very briefly, I think I've showed it in a previous video, just our trading platform and how something could be traded on our platform. And then I'll explain to you how when a company comes to us and has that liquidity, if they build that fan base, if they're good enough to you as the investor, if they are uh, uh, communicative enough, if they're explaining what their business does, how quickly and easily they can raise money through our platform. And I'll explain that and our primary market to you after this video reference our trading platform. Okay, what I wanted to do is show you a quick trade so that you can see how we are trading the tokenized equity of uh, companies, test companies in this scenario, but they are connected to the exchange. So this is essentially a, a real world test through, um, uh, through various different systems. So I am going to purchase the, this one. And uh, in fact, I'll do this one. It's got, a, it's got on the bid and offer there. So you'll see these are a typical level two bid and offer. You can see the depth that's in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy, uh, buy that one. So I'm going to buy it good till cancelled at 35 and I'm going to buy 100. 
you'll see that there are the charges laid out here, the capital cost, any stamp duty that's on a particular trade. And I just want to show you the, the execution time. So I press that, you'll see that this is now uh, executed. That has been uh, legally settled and uh, transferred to the owner. Uh, it's all done on an atomic basis and uh, settled on our blockchain ledger uh, in less than two tenths of a second. That, that happens in real time. That has gone to the exchange. So it's been inputted here. It's gone to the exchange. It has been settled. The exchange has now updated our ledger and that the, uh, the ledger is all done. So you can see from that brief video of the trading system. Once, it, once the uh, fractionalized, tokenized, uh, you know, uh, securitized, however you, want to, uh, however you want to describe it, once that is uh, brought into our system, uh, the ability to trade it is very, very, very easy. We've taken a lot of the friction out of it so that it's simple to do. So rather than having to download a system and, and faff about trying to uh, uh, get your shares into the system, we've created parts and elements of the system that we'll have in other videos that will show exactly how simple it is to get the shares on a secondary listing into our system or even something that has been listed for the first time into that system and traded onto that platform. Now, obviously, once those companies are in this in a position to show us and our investors that they are good communicators, that they are good at running their business, that they've had the opportunity to tell us a story, then they can go back to those investors and they can look to raise funds on our primary market as a private placement. They may want to come to us and say, hey, I want to raise a couple of million pounds. We'll talk them through the process. We'll introduce them to our investors over the platform. They'll do showcase some videos. They'll showcase um, their, the, the reason that they're raising those funds. They might have Q&As. They might have events that they'll hold. But all that will be done before they look to raise some money over the platform. And once they've created their fan base, we can list, we can list their deal on our primary market and all the details will be there and available on the primary market. And as you can see from this video, it is a simple process. This is from the, um, from the mobile app. The uh, front page will, is a chart that shows you how well uh, your portfolio is doing. You can then go into the primary market and the primary market will be a list or a showcase of deals that are currently available and raising money. These are all obviously mock-ups for this one. You simply go into each deal, you can read all the documentation, there are prospectuses and uh, legal documentations and declarations and due diligence and all the stuff that you will need to, uh, to have to make a decision and you can simply then bid. Um, the system will suspend the amount you bid within the platform and upon a successful completion of that, that fundraise and all the legal documents and everything need to be done and, and the agreement for the exchange to now list those new shares. When we press that drawdown button, they'll be, they'll be ready to trade the next day. So you can see as a process, it's fairly simple. Uh, there's a complex, uh, you know, listing a company is not a, a simple exercise, but we have made it as frictionless for companies and certainly frictionless for investors to invest in those companies. Now, if you can see that, uh, if, you can, if you can imagine the benefits to those businesses of being able to raise, f raise funds uh, for decent projects, being able to have liquidity for their investors, this is, a, this is a system that can release value. We saw the frozen house scenario at the beginning of this video, but it can be frozen shares because they're not being listed on an exchange. It can be a portfolio of properties. It can be a portfolio of, of vintage cars, anything that has illiquidity and that has the value that makes it cost effective to list on an exchange, we can do it. And th therein lies a lot of value for investors that are going to come onto our platform. You know, there is one that's coming to us that is trading currently on a different exchange and it's trading at 10% of its net asset value. Imagine for uh, the sake of argument that our investors looked at it and went, hey, this is a great business and just got it to the fact where it was trading at the same value that its assets are. That's a 10x improvement and increase return on your money. 
So there are thousands, the, 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 the amount of businesses that are in that situation are legion. And we aim to pick those up, put them within our system and present them to you, our investors. So at the beginning of this video, I showed you the trailer, the beginning of the trailer for dumb money. The reason it's called dumb money is that's what they generally call retail investors money because they're the ones who have the last bit of information in the marketplace. But as a matter of fact, retail investment in that particular stock became the clever money. A lot of the big hedge funds were short of GameStop and the being short basically means that you are betting on the shares going down. And to do that, you've got to borrow shares and to close your positions, you've got to buy them back. Uh, a young fella on Reddit uh, saw that I believe it was 140 odd percent of the stock had been shorted, which means obviously if there was plenty of shares being bought in the marketplace who weren't prepared to borrow them, then that share price would go up. And that's what happened. It went from a very small amount of money to over $300 and people were making millions out of it and the hedge funds were losing billions. Hence, right at the very beginning, you saw those people saying, hey, how much have we made? 11 million. And the other guy hedge fund saying, how much have you lost? About a billion. So I'll leave you with that thought. What we're trying to do at ASMX here is harness the power of collective investment, is giving the opportunity for investors to find these diamonds in the rough, to find these companies that with some liquidity and some support from investors on a, on a decent uh, li a liquid exchange through a liquid environment will be able to bring value to investors across our network. Thanks very much for listening and I look forward to getting some more videos out for you. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you would. It helps us get the message out there to more people. Thanks a lot. There's no hope for the little guy. Shitballs. Maybe now there is. Yeah.